After this run, one of you guys is going home. You got four hours. Bring us your best jar of your particular style of whiskey to our table. Your time starts now. Good luck, y'all. Let's get lit. I noticed Curtis packed his cap with copper mesh. That could be a good and that could be bad. <laughs> could get rid of all the flavor. How much copper mesh did you put in? The whole day gonna roll. Pretty good move on your part there, Curtis. I'm, I'm hoping I can scrub some of that char flavor off in there. If not, charcoal's my backup. Yeah, you know, that's what your jar of liquor looks like if you run it over and it unclean. I'd have to just walk out. <laughs> There it is. I'm, I just want to be the best drop, not the first drop. There it is. Finally. Chris, looks like you're ready to start making liquor. It should be coming. There it is. Yay! <laughs> I feel pretty good. I want full flavor, buttery to the palate. And when I sip it, I want it to stay. The taste profile was very rich. I want to keep that. That's why I chose to go with the pot still again. I think you got a good setup. The judges said that my taste was very good, but my proof was low. I just want to keep that flavor in and just increase the proof. Chris. Yes, sir. Your grandmother, do you know what kind of steel she was running? They had a big pot. They ferment in a steel pot. And then they put a container in the middle of the pot with the mash, and they put a wok on top of that with cold water and then just add cold water, cold water, cold water boils. It would steam up to the top of the, the bottom of the wok, and it would drip down to the center and condense. Really? Yeah, all the bad stuff in it, too. Got them where they needed to be, though. They got alcohol. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've, I've seen those type steels. Do you ever try to plan on maybe replicating that process? Yes, I got a big wok. You know, that would be real interesting. I want to do it, I want to try. Today, you got the knowledge. Uh, you know the difference in, in the methanol and the ethanol. Uh -huh. So uh, just to give you a little education on that, if you heat it up until, you know, the 175 and, and get that methanol dissipating off before you put that insert in there, right. then you'll catch the alcohol. But you have to be quick at it. Right, right. Because you're going to lose some, which is not very efficient anyway. But that is, I've seen that still. Right. It's very difficult to operate especially if you got a wood fire and all yeah. that stuff. And I know they build them in the ground. They put them in, in, in the earth and, and, and seal the fire away from it because the alcohol vapor is at the top right. coming out. Uh, it's, 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 it's tricky. Guys, you got two hours. They're all tuned in pretty good. They into the uh, concentration of the mix here. Uh-oh, hold on a minute. Clean up. Mm -hmm. Okay, hold on. No, this is my first batch. Oh, yeah. Whew, that's a world of difference. You got one hour and five minutes left. There you go. That's the proof you're looking for. Yeah. Dissipates in less than two seconds. Curtis spot on. He knows how to look at his bead and tell what he's got. I'm used to proofing it down with a hydrometer. We don't do the shake tests, so it's really tough. Pretty high proof. This remember, has got to be higher than last time. The concern on your face tells me that blending's not your job. I do some, but <laughs> not a whole lot. This is pressure because somebody's going somewhere. And not to the next round. I see you looking at that picture, Chris. What would Grandma do? Drink it. <laughs> I'm happy. I have no complaints except for the scorch. I am done. But I'm hoping that I can pull out just a little bit farther ahead. Kentucky style whiskey. Gentlemen, that is the best I can do for the moment. All right, sounds good enough for us. Bringing it in, Chris. Yes, sir. Japanese whiskey. Tastes pretty good. All righty. This is it. Scotch. Lorna Doom, once again. Good luck, Lorna. Thank you. Well, at least they're clear. I want to taste Chris's Japanese whiskey. I mean, you look at that. 
Low proof, guys. You know, proof in the mid 80s is what you're looking for in this style, and he's not far off. That's a good wheaty liquor. And you really want those grains to come to the front when it comes to Japanese style. He's done that. Most got a little fruity taste to it, but he doesn't have to proof that. He could redeem that easy with just a little splash of some high proof liquor. I think I want to go on down the lawn. You want a little drink of scotch? Well, that's another good, pretty Joe. I can't get a bead out of it. Not be in the neighborhood of 80. Yeah, that's a smoky, peaty yeah. smell. That tastes just like scotch. It's got the flavor and it's got the nose, but there's very little alcohol in it. Mick Curtis. Another good clear jaw. Once again, Curtis is spot on with his proof for that Kentucky style whiskey. Curtis knows what he's doing. He just suffered an unfortunate accident where he scorched that mash. We've all scorched mash. It's just, I can't get past the scorch. Are we all in agreement? I'm good. I am. All right. We know who's going home. I think we all did good. Cheers. Good luck, y'all. All right, guys, welcome back. It was uh, pretty tough work on you judges you see right here. Curtis, you know exactly what you did from the minute you built your mash. Yes, sir. And if you had been at the house, you'd have turned that out and run on another run of mash. Unfortunately, you didn't pull that scorch out of there. But all in all, you did a damn fine job. Thank you. Chris, your flavor base stayed the same all the way through. Your skills of distilling, are spot on. You got flavor, just lacking alcohol. Arna, your smoky peat is coming through tremendously. It's on the nose, and it's in the taste also. Except you're a little lower. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, guys, I reckon it comes the time that we've got to swing that axe. Unfortunately, Curtis, that jar there bought you a ticket home, old buddy. I am so sorry. Things happen. And just so you know, we've all scorched mash. I got to commend you. Not one time during this process did you lay any excuses anymore. You did what you come to do and made a damn fine showing. In the big scheme of things, makes you the man that you are, sir. First and foremost, you're a good distiller, but you're a gentleman more so. Thank you. The comments from the judges got me a little emotional just knowing that I am good at my craft. Unfortunately, I just picked the wrong day to slip up.